you are born in the cold, black depths of the ocean. So deep that light barely reaches you, and the silence is only interrupted by the occasional whale call or snapping shrimp. You're tiny, I mean microscopic, a drifting speck with barely a pulse and absolutely zero idea that you're about to become the ocean's weirdest scientific marvel. You are a Turritopsis dorney, a jellyfish that scientists refer to as biologically immortal. That's right, immortal. But hold off on the victory dance. You may not age like other creatures, but your life? Far from easy. As a larva, you are plankton, which is just a polite way of saying free-floating ocean snack. Everything in the ocean wants to eat you. Tiny fish, shrimp, other jellyfish, Heck, even your own species might give it a go, if they're hungry enough. So you drift, you wiggle, you pray, if jellyfish could pray, that you won't get slurped up by something with teeth. Somehow, you survive and eventually settle onto a hard surface like a rock or a shipwreck. You transform into a polyp. Think of it as setting up base camp on the sea floor. Congratulations, you are now a weird, plant-like blob. This is your awkward teenage phase. You can't move. You can't fight, you just kind of exist for months, maybe years, growing little clones of yourself like a living jellyfish vending machine. One day, something clicks. Maybe it's temperature, maybe it's hunger, maybe it's just your internal calendar going, okay, let's do this. You go through a process called strobilation and finally transform into a medusa, aka an actual jellyfish. Your bell blooms out like a ghostly umbrella, and you begin to swim for the first time. It's majestic. You've made it. You're free. You're mobile. But also, you're delicious. Yummy. Your new body may be graceful, but it's also fragile. Like one wrong brush with a rock and your soup, fragile. You drift through the water column with a whole new list of things that want you dead. Sea turtles, larger jellyfish, fish, crabs. Even humans who think you're some kind of sea monster or accidentally scoop you up in their nets. You have no brain, no heart, and no bones. Your only tools are your stinging tentacles and your ability to float dramatically. You learn to avoid predators. You dodge. You hide in algal blooms and ride currents to safer areas. You even find a few other jellyfish to float around with. There's no bonding, no group photos, just survival, always survival. Then it happens. You're injured. Maybe you bump into a predator. Maybe you don't get enough food. Or maybe the water temperature shifts too fast. In any other species, this is where the story ends. But not for you. Instead of dying, your body begins to collapse on purpose. Your cells de-differentiate. That's science speak for you turn back into a baby. You literally reverse age. You sink to the bottom of the ocean, curl into a ball, and become a polyp again. Just let that sink in. You hit life's reset button. You don't die. You respawn. It's like if an elderly person stubbed their toe and immediately turned into a toddler again. This, my immortal friend, is your party trick. And scientists are obsessed with it. Now back in polyp mode, you start over. Again. A new medusa buds off from your polyp base, and that jellyfish floats away. Is it still you? That's debatable. Are you technically your own child? Maybe. Ocean metaphysics is weird like that. Over time, you repeat this cycle. Again and again. Injury? Reset. Starvation? Reset. Life getting a bit too real? Reset. But it's not all sparkle and sci-fi. Because each time you start over, you don't just wipe your body. You wipe your experience. You forget everything. Every dodge, every predator, every close call. It's all gone. So yes, you're immortal, but you're also stuck in the world's most exhausting loop of eternal amnesia. Let's talk about the emotional stuff. <laughs> Not that you have emotions, but if you did, you'd probably be kind of bummed. Your jelly companions, they get eaten, caught, or simply don't have your magic genes. While you start over, they fade away. You never really form attachments, but if you did, you'd be the ocean's version of the lonely vampire trope. Drifting through time while everything else changes. You can feel the ocean getting warmer each year. You see currents shift. Plastic starts to collect in places it never used to. 
giant ships cut through the water above you, and humans throw sonar and fishing nets into your world. The ocean isn't what it used to be, but you're still here, drifting, resetting, repeating. One day, something will probably get you. A turtle might finally crunch you. A fishing boat might scoop you up before your next reset. Maybe pollution or climate change will finally throw the ocean off balance enough that even your miracle trick won't save you. But until that day comes, you're still floating, resetting, and confusing the heck out of scientists. You are the biological loophole. The evolutionary, what the heck is this? The creature that refuses to follow the rules. So yeah, you're immortal. But is that really a good thing? You'll never grow old, but you'll also never grow up. You'll never form memories that last, never build relationships, never evolve beyond what you were millions of years ago. You can't die from aging, but you also can't live in the way we think of living. Your life is a loop, beautiful, haunting, mysterious. And maybe that's the real reason people are so fascinated by you. Not because you beat death, but because you made peace with being stuck in a cycle the rest of us fear. So the next time someone says they want to live forever, maybe tell them to look up the immortal jellyfish, and then ask if they'd really be okay with living the same life over and over again. Forever. You, you'll just keep drifting, silent, ageless, unforgettable. Even if you forget everything. This guy has it rough, but not as bad as the wildebeest. Check out this video next.